Hello and welcome. I used to be a happiness junkie. I was in constant pursuit for certainty in my life in order to always feel happy. For some years I used deep meditation techniques and even held my very own meditation workshops and sessions in order to guarantee that certainty and happiness was a constant in my life. The problem is that when crisis did hit, because I put all my focus and energy into ensuring I was surrounded by certainty and could always feel happy, I lacked the skills to deal with challenges when they did present themselves in my life. And over time, I realized that actually being attached to certainty placed me into inevitable uncertainty. In other words, the more I tried to avoid uncertainty, the more uncertain my life became. And this left me captive to living with overwhelming inner turmoil. And even though I presented to the world as a bright personality and was the most positive and upbeat person, I found it seemed to guarantee nothing. That I always seemed to be dealing with huge challenges in my life. In fact, everywhere I go with my work, I find that people worldwide have experienced similar that certainty is something that they feel they need to hold on to at all costs and that change is too threatening and makes them feel unhappy and unsafe. That uncertainty creates an unpredictability that appears to never end. I used to be a motivational speaker and I, I was pretty good at it. And then I noticed that people came back after a couple of days, a week, a month or however long Literally using words like, uh, I need another dose of Janetta, or we need another Janetta fix. And I realized that I had become their drug in order for them to feel they could move forward with certainty. They were uplifting themselves with my energy, but lacked the skills to do it for themselves. I then took myself off for several years to develop and expand my intuition. I mean, after all, Fortune 500 CEOs talk about how their gut instinct is their most accurate tool to guarantee successful outcomes. And yet, once again with time, I found that people were still coming to me, believing that my intuition was more trustworthy than theirs. And I again realized that I was still out of integrity. And it was round about this time of re-questioning that my greatest life test happened. One day, my 16-year-old daughter Jen and I had an enormous argument. She was displaying typical teenager rebellion. And so I was reinforcing house rules in order to keep her safe. And with a huge amount of anger, she took herself off to her room to pack to leave home. After a while, I sensed that something wasn't right and so I went to find her, and I found her hanging in her shower with a broken neck. A myriad of thoughts and emotions overtook me in that moment of finding her, like paralyzing shock and that sense of finality versus instant action to try and revive her no matter what. Thoughts on how we as a family would ever overcome this tragedy to complete relief that Jen could no longer hurt herself and she was no longer my responsibility. These conflicting thoughts of guilt and shame left me feeling beyond adequate as a mum and brought me to my knees. The fallout was enormous and having to deal with that sense of failure was really, quite honestly, beyond bearable. Over the following months, I battled to gain equilibrium and I could and even so, I continued to hold my workshops as best I could. But deep down inside, I was dying. It felt as though I was in a deep, dark emotional hole, trapped, as though I was serving a lifetime emotional prison sentence. And then prophetically, nine months after Jen died, I came across the basics of the process I sub subsequently have called the epiphany process. I was able to work my loss through by expanding and fine-honing these basics and bringing them to what the process has become today. 
and I'll tell you how we can work together with this at the end of this talk. Although I consult from rooms in Harley Street here in London, the Epiphany process works mostly internationally online from weekly online workshop calls for people wanting to experience an introduction to the process through to one-on-one -on -one consultations online where cl clients can enjoy expanding their Epiphany skills in the comfort of their own space without having to travel to consultation rooms. From the very first half-hour consult, people have been able to take control of their lives again in ways that can take weeks, months and even years to achieve with other applications. Through two online certification programs, clients have further chosen to skillfully master the process and then step even further into qualifying as an international Epiphany consultant if that's what they'd like to do. The Epiphany process provides a series of proven unique questions that skillfully on an unconscious and conscious level, balance excessive thoughts and emotions, bringing them into open-hearted appreciation, acceptance and manageability. These questions, by way of example, have taken suicidal, self-harming teenagers after many months of being stuck under their bedsheets and have helped them to step out of their bedrooms within a couple of weeks and once again start interacting with loved ones, socialising and living normal, healthy lives. Couples, whether they part or remain together, find they can hold authentic, open and powerful conversations with each other from a new place of safety, clarity and certainty with a natural sense of self-acceptance and ease. Traumatized terrorist attack victims have been able to turn their lives around within a handful of sessions. One of the greatest success stories in this respect was with Mariam, who is from Somalia. She was three months pregnant out shopping with her husband when he was shot dead at point blank range by terrorists right next to her. With the help of this process, Mariam was able to powerfully process her trauma and loss and now works representing marginalized Somali women. She talks at workshops and forums within the United Nations, by way of example. During Corona lockdown, I dealt with many children all around the world, in Australia, Kenya, UK, and the US, even South Africa, who were caught in the confusion of isolation. Several found that their deepest fears magnified with the worry of coronavirus whilst being trapped at home. And it was as if their emotional fear volume dial had automatically been turned up. And again, through utilising the Epiphany's questions, their magnified fears became manageable and all but disappeared. They no longer felt bothered by them. Also during the lockdown time, I worked with three brothers with autism under the age of 12. Can you imagine in lockdown with that age? Who shifted from serious levels of fighting with each other, even using words like, I'm going to kill you, into using powerful conversation skills from new levels of acceptance, understanding and empathy. After just even four sessions, People find that they are spontaneously, open-heartedly and more easily dealing with their everyday challenges. But here's what I haven't told you. Before forming the Epiphany process, there were several occasions after Jen died where I seriously contemplated taking my own life. Even though I had the basics of this process to work with, I didn't have someone to work them through with on a daily basis and on three occasions I decided it would be easier to leave the planet. On the final occasion, on the second anniversary of Jen's death, I had decided that living this emotional pain was leaving me feeling more uncertain and overwhelmed than ever. And so I made a fail-safe plan to end my life. I organised to take some time off and visit my brother four hours ride away from me. 
and we agreed that I would only need to next contact him on the train once I was near to his station. But I had a counter plan, and I found a remote town which in, was in the opposite direction to where he lived, that I'd never heard of, and then I booked into a bed and breakfast there. And I wanted to go somewhere far away where I didn't leave a trail in order to spare my family and loved ones. I just wanted to disappear. On the eve of my departure, whilst packing my bags, I unexpectedly received a phone call from my brother. For some reason, he chose to rather call me the night before to confirm my arrival time. And it was this phone call that kicked me out of my initial focus and had me change my plans to arrive safely at his station. It was from there that I made the decision to expand and fine hone these basic questions. I decided to walk the walk and talk the talk and to authentically live a life of certainty. It was in working the process through personally to these new levels that I was able to eventually come to form the epiphany process. The biggest aha for me for all those years ago was to know that I could make uncertainty become a vital ingredient in my life, to use it to live a balanced, gratitude-filled life. In other words, that uncertainty was equally a positive part of my life as it was negative. This entailed beginning with three basic steps, and I'm able to share them with you today to help you to already get started. It's just a start because obviously having a coach to more skillfully work it through and expand it really makes a difference. But beginning with these first steps can already help you along. And it'll help you to shift yourself from feeling unsafe and uncertain into feeling more energized and focused. But certainly has the capacity to. Step one is to list all the areas in your life which you feel uncertain in. It's a pretty easy list to do. It's one we run in our minds all the time. And you probably don't even need me to help you to put that one together. Step two, your next step, is to choose which one in that list feels the most overwhelming. The one that holds the most overwhelm will charge for you. Now step three tells a little bit more. Start equally listing where in experiencing that overwhelming feeling, it has provided you with skills, techniques, experience and exposure in your life. In other words, if you hadn't experienced that uncertainty, what would be missing in your life now? It helps to ask yourself questions like, who or what did you turn to and start trusting more because you felt uncertain? Perhaps it was a family member, a friend or friends, people at work or a boss, or, or maybe a group of people. Ask yourself further questions like, what special thing happened with family that would be missing if you'd always felt certain? What did your uncertainty push you to do with family? What did you do different socially that worked and would not have happened if you'd always felt certain? What decisions did you make about your finances and work because of your uncertainty that helped your finances and job to work out better? What did your uncertainty get you to turn to physically? Perhaps it was reading, arts, crafts, exercising, writing. Any of those things could have been running. Who or what did it push you to trust more? The experience of which would be missing in your life if you hadn't felt uncertain. If you like what I spoke with you about today and it resonated with you, then let's jump on a Zoom virtual coffee call together and start creating solutions to challenges you might be dealing with right now. By clicking here, you can secure your time to personally chat with me. I very much look forward to personally meeting you soon as I send you lots of love for now.